Hi, just a quick solar update video for those playing along at home. Um, it's fixed. It's fixed. <laughs> the solar guys were just out to troubleshoot uh, what happened to the second uh, string on the new uh, DI inverter. And um, here it is, live monitor 5.18. Um, this is my uh, solar analytics uh, system. So this is the combined output from both the end phase system and from the new two string di uh, system and it did hit a peak of oh, 5.8 kilowatts something like there it's dropped down a little bit here um once again uh, the panels still have not been cleaned at all so um yeah i believe they've got like a layer of dust from the factory on them or something like that so i've got to get up there and clean the panels uh no they wouldn't uh clean them as part of the install because they did not supply them so whatever Okay, I would have thought as a courtesy, you'd just, you know, clean them. But eh, whatever, because this isn't your typical install job, right, where they supply the brand new panels and they install a brand new system. This was a reinstallation using old panels and ones that I uh, got uh, cheap from some, you know, warehouse clearance sale or whatever. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it was just a reinstall thing. So that is uh, the live uh, consumption. There, there it is. Uh, so, yeah, five, there you go, 5.8 kilowatts. We can refresh that process in blah 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 yeah so it's dropped down a bit i don't know it might be slightly overcast but uh yeah there you go um for those who want to know it was um as suspected a bad connection up on the uh string apparently um one of the because uh, bad contact inside the mc4 connector apparently yeah they weren't making contact it was uh, they hadn't terminated it properly i presume something like that they said yeah it was bad sleeve the internal sleeve thing um, that's what she said. Um, it, yeah, wasn't touching. So, boop. Um, yeah, I hope, hope the rest are good. I might get up with my, get up there with my thermal camera one day and get under there and check every, well, I can't actually because, um, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> there's too many panels up there now and I can't get access because the two DC string ones are on the bottom of it. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, so there you have it. Um, actually, I did not check, but they actually did send up the drone as well. So they actually did do that. And uh, they also moved that earth wire from the comm jack to the internal, uh, to one of the comm things. I, if you look at my Twitter X account, you can see, I, uh, uh, no, I haven't posted a photo of that. But yeah, they did reroute the uh, wire in there. So uh, there you go. It's working. Yep, as suspected, bad MC4 connector on the roof. Uh, but like, I don't know, solar installers, leave it in the comments down below. If you're installing a system, like, because they installed uh, the panels and then came back later, they installed the panels one day and then came back later to install the uh, inverter like a week later or something like that. But after you install the panels, wouldn't you like connect it up and like measure the bottom or something? I don't like to make sure it's coming out. Apparently they didn't bother to do that. And one of the MC4 connectors was, yeah, it wasn't just like a bad contact. It physically was not making contact at all. Um, it was physically out. So that's why, yeah, we're getting zero volts out of your string. <laughs> There's your problem. So yeah, there you go. Uh, quick update there. Um, and the end phase in, yeah. So if they do update, they'll eventually update that um, over the drone shot, they'll get a photo of that, and then they'll update that on my end phase in light. And in fact, I can probably, I uh, don't have it open here. Hang on, in light, end phase, enlighten. I can log into that and let me check to see if they've updated. D -d 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 doing this live, I won't edit this video, I'll just update it. And array, array. Nope, they haven't updated the photo yet, but they uh, were they said they'll send me the uh, drone footage and stuff, so they haven't updated that, if you want to see that. It's just old. There it is there. There you go. <laughs> so I will have a new photo, and that's the live end phase one. That's what it's producing at the moment. So the sun's obviously um, more on the uh, western side now because we're getting, uh, well, that's what hours. I don't have a live. That's not, that's energy. That's not power. So that's not a live production um, power, but that's the end phase. So yeah, uh, we've got 2.5 kilowatts coming from the end, uh, 2.5 kilowatt hours. <laughs> no, K 
kilowatts. So 2.5 kilowatts coming from the end phase and the rest of that, uh, the almost six or 5.8, um, the difference there is coming from the new DI string inverter. So there you go, I'm fully operational. Uh, that's basically, so six kilowatts or thereabouts, um, that's from a nominal 11 kilowatt system. That's what my, the panel capacity of my new uh, syst combined two systems is is 11 kilowatts um, is you know the banner spec for the actual uh, panels um, that will reduce based on the micro inverters for the end phase system the 295 watt uh, hooked onto the 370 watt panels so that will uh, reduce the peak power capacity in the middle of summer, but today um, it won't uh, be impacting that at all um, because it'll be under the 295 watts. Um, so that's what you'd expect. In the middle of winter here in uh, Sydney is kind of what I was seeing with the old system was, you know, sometimes half, it depends on the solar insulation on uh, on the day and the cloud cover and everything else, right? Um, but yeah, nominally I can get like half on a good sunny day, day it can be as low as half of the nominal panel capacity so if you're in one of those you know um high latitude um european cities or whatever then you'll get a lot worse than that i've heard people say oh yeah get like 10 percent out or something like something horrific like that but here in sydney yeah you know as a real, rough rule of thumb you'll get like half of your output um, than you'll get in uh, summer. So in summer, I won't get the full 11 kilowatts because as I said, the 295 watt micro inverters on there, but I might get 10, like, I don't know, nine, nine and a half, something like that, um, peak power. So that should be really good to charge the EV. If I charge the EV at full power, at seven kilowatts. So that leaves a couple of kilowatts left over in the middle of summer. So anyway, I'm gonna analyze uh, this now in terms of like uh, excess power how much is going back to the grid and uh, what capacity battery I should install. Cause this thing had, does have a battery calculator, but I don't think it's show me the best option. Show me advanced options. Yeah, current plan, save money. <laughs> Just show me the best option. Come on, submit. Last, no, no, don't want last, <laughs> last 30 days, last seven days. Give me the last week. <laughs> but yeah, no, I need to rerun this um, and it will do. Uh, is it going to submit in battery batteries on your site? This may take a minute. Oh, okay. But yeah, I was thinking maybe a 15 kilowatt um, hour battery. Like I wouldn't install less than 10. I think that's a bit of a waste. And with the two new panels I plan to put on the pergola roof, I was thinking about feeding those into the old EcoFlow battery, um, feeding those straight in there actually, and just powering the uh, fridges from it. So yeah, maybe. I can't power all the fridges, doesn't quite have the capacity for that, but I can power two fridges, so it's pretty good. Oh, here it is, yeah, oh, okay, grid grid independence, payback, battery cost, three kilowatt battery size, don't know where they, like, you can't even enter your, come on, <laughs> solar analytics, let me enter like m m my own battery cost, or something like that. So yeah, payback time, three to four years, something like that, right, so, you know. I'm not that interested in pay, but like I just want to, the feeling that I'm using my so, my excess solar at night, you know, just to power, um, you know. So payback isn't that critical for me, um, you know. It's not like I I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do. I don't think I'd do the battery if it the payback was like thirty years or something like that. But you know, if it's like a decade, eh, I'm not too fussed. Um, or if it's five years, you know. But yeah. Anyway, um, the good thing about the DI inverter is that I have lots of options for cheaper batteries. So it supports like dozens of different manufacturers, even lead acid batteries. I could get like <laughs> just regular, get some old car batteries or something and hook them up and it can still do that. It's got like an ex external temperature sensor as well. I can stick on the batteries and, and things. So yeah, it's, it's really cool. So anyway, yeah, so I'll go for a couple of months and just analyze what sort of excess uh, consumption, excess production that I have, and uh, what size battery, but I figure anything less than 10 kilowatts, you just, hours, is you just, you know, just fart assing around, um, so I was thinking maybe 15, something like that, might cost me about eight grand for a battery system, um, something like that, anyway, um, thoughts and comments down below, catch you next time, press stop.